Hello, good morning. Another thought for the day, a nice, looks like another sunny Monday. Sunday, Monday. Anyway, we hear a lot about, in the Philippines, from everywhere, about how important families are. And I agree, um, since being here nearly eight years now, it's uh, easy to observe the family structure from afar, in other words, from outside. My own family uh, is no different. And that is that families always have different dynamics within themselves. Some siblings are very close to each other and some siblings are somewhat differential to each other. What comes into the mix, of course, is how fortunate or how wealthy the different members of the family become. Some, of course, appear to be extremely wealthy, especially if you add up the value of all of their motor vehicles. It's a pretty good example of disposable income. I think we all remember when we were young, we used to measure our wealth, often, by what we had around ourselves. No different here in the Philippines. Just like somebody who has no means of transport until he buys a bicycle. Later on, he may well buy a motorbike, or a motorbike sidecar, tricycle as they call it here. But then, of course, the next step up would be maybe an owner or a second-hand car. If, of course, they're in some form of construction, or maybe in with the church, they might buy a van. Why, you say? Well, it's part of keeping up the image. Because if you have a van, you can take your so-called friends around and help them to keep them feeling that you're important. It's all part and parcel of image. Image is so important here in the Philippines. That's why the concept of saving face is important too. Always remember, try not to ever insult somebody, certainly not to their face, because to do so will be to make an enemy for life. But back to families. Families, when you first come as a foreigner, they spend a lot of time trying to be liked, I suppose, or included in the, the new arrival oneself. But over time, very fast time too, you soon discover that you are no longer necessarily flavour of the month. Why, you might say? Well, in most cases, if you've got any common sense, you very rarely lend them money. If there's a need to contribute to an outing, maybe, that you're all going to, that's fine. But not to the point where you're paying for it in total. It's more a case of going Dutch, if you get my meaning. That means 50-50, one-sixth, one-half, one-third, whatever it is. And you will find situations like that, but also many of you comment, oh my family, they're, they're so welcoming, they're doing, are they really? Or are they welcoming of your wallet? or the opportunity to stay in your good books, for the opportunity maybe one day to put their hand out when they need it. So don't be fooled by the smiles and the, the pleasantries that you get invited all the time to. Sit back in your mind while you're sitting there amongst them and see how often you get a conversation going between yourself and one of those family members. Because if you analyse it, quite often it's very little. Mainly because they don't really consider you part of the family. Yes, 
you may be with their sister or their brother and that in itself does not give you the right to consider yourself part of the family. We consider ourselves them part of the family but they don't see it quite the same way coming back because just like an old bicycle you can throw it away when you don't need it and hence will they talk about you when you're gone? In other words, will they say nice things or will they just not talk about you as if you never existed? I think they'd be more likely to be that. Of course, if you build them a home and everybody has the opportunity to benefit from it, they might once in a while say, oh, that was good building this house for us. After all, without this house, we wouldn't have done so well, thanks to Dada. And you also know that when you pass their home and no one says anything to you and yet they're five, six feet away from you, you know they're not interested in what you're doing. Not in the same way that you would want to know what your brother was up to or your sister back home. Just out of, I don't know, nosiness or just simply caring about your brother and sister. But here, not quite the same. They will buy a new car, get a new digger, get some new furniture, and they'll be the first to tell the world that they bought it. And it will subtly get back to you as well. In a way, it's showing off. It's more like keeping up with the Joneses, except they're the ones, they are the Joneses, or they think they are. And you hear things like from nephews and nieces, oh, we have no budget. Really? Yet you can have all those vehicles, and you can have all that nice furniture and all those big widescreen TVs. Well, we all know how that happens. It's called time payment. And we often know that that can get you into big strife if things go bad. Things can go bad very quickly here for families here. They can lose their job. A member of the family can get sick and drain them of their resources. Then do they suddenly become your best friend again? I think maybe an opportunity maybe to put their hand out again. So don't be fooled by the concept that Filipino families are very family orientated. They are, but for a reason. We don't have really social security here. We don't have backup financial from the government. They just don't have the resources to do that. And therefore, Everybody in the family tries to help the less fortunate. We're not one of the less fortunate, so no one tries to help us in our case. All we observe is the lack of family quite often. And it is disappointing, because when you come to a country, you would like to think that your new addition is going to be a blessing to everybody, like a new child coming into the family, but not a foreigner. Foreigners are a different species altogether. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And you have a good day. The conditioner, it's sort of working, but it's still a bit wild. You can call me Boris, but not Boris Karloff. Boris Johnson's fine. Bye now.